Hey there, my name is Kirsten and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about the final episode of season 3 of the 100. Season 3 episode 16 of the 100 is the finale part 2. I would say the title to you, but I am horrible at saying the title because it's like the most intense word I've seen in a very long time. I don't know. So because this was the final episode and so much happened and there's so much to like think about and reflect on, I think I'm gonna do this a little bit differently than I usually do. I kind of plan on doing two videos for this. And so this this is just gonna be like a recap slash a run through of the episode with a little bit of my own commentary thrown in there. And then my next video will be more of an analysis and like more of a reaction, even though this video is also my reaction. Um, and so, if you guys are into my reactions and analyses and analyses, I can't speak, um, then make sure you watch out for the next video. It should be coming up very soon if you're watching this when it isn't out already. And this video right here is just going to be basically a plot overview of what happened in this episode with a little bit of my own commentary. So, disclaimer, if you haven't seen the series finale of season three of the 100 i would not watch this yet unless you don't mind spoilers so let's get into the episode so if you saw my review for last episode i was like thank god i don't have heart problems because i'd be dead right now <sighs> i would be dead six times over right now if i had heart problems for the series finale this episode was so stressful it's not even funny like i have to go back and watch this episode again so that i can like properly watch it without the entire time just being like pull the lever pull the lever pull the lever clark pull the lever i spent the entire episode like worrying who was gonna die if people were gonna live if octavia was gonna pull something that she shouldn't spoiler she did and i just feel like the entire episode was just a very suspenseful stressful moment in my life and by moment in my life i mean like hour of agony so that's what this episode was <laughs> it was intense it was stressful and honestly if you had heart problems you might be dead so a disclaimer for people with heart problems don't watch the 100 just don't do it to yourself it's a great show but don't do it to yourself your health is worth more so we start this episode off right where we left off in the last episode and it opens up with Abby being de-chipped by Clark and then Abby waking up and they have they have this like heartfelt moment of like I'm sorry and then Clark is crying and Abby is crying and it's so hard to see the two of them cry because they're such strong characters and they pretty much never break down like they break down every once in a while but they pretty much never break down so it's like really hard to see Abby and Clark cry so it's a very heartbreaking reunion um, I saw on Twitter that everybody was crying I didn't cry but it was a very heartbreaking reunion but then after a couple seconds they pretty much get right down to business into what's going to happen in the episode. So Clark decides she wants to filter on Tori's blood through her system, Mount Weather style. So to run on Tori's blood through Clark and then like siphon Clark's blood through on Tori and just like have a circle of their blood running through each other. And hopefully that's enough night blood to keep a flame alive in Clark without melting her brain. They all have this moment of, no, it'll kill you to Clark. And pretty much everyone is against the idea except for Clark herself and I think kind of Murphy. So then Octavia comes in and says, whatever you're gonna do, you have to do it fast because Allie's minions are climbing the building. And they look out and Allie's minions are scaling the building and they all pretty much decide that Clark's plan is the only plan, even if it might kill her. So then we hop back over to Arcadia where we have Harper and Jasper in like a sticky situation. Then we have Monty and Raven inside the control room where they've built the Alley computer. So while Raven keeps Jasper slash Alley occupied over the little walkie, Monty breaks out secretly and he shoots Jasper in the leg and saves Harper. And it's like heartbreaking because Monty has to shoot someone he loves again, but like it's also like hoorah. So glad that happened. I'm also torn and I feel bad for Jasper. Cause now when Jasper wakes up, he's gonna have this wound in his leg. So back in Polis, uh, after they get the flame successfully inside of Clark, the flame tells Clark that she needs to go inside of the City of Light and take the chip so that she can get in there and pull the kill switch so that she can end Allie for good. And they're all pretty much like, no, you can't go into the City of Light also, but Bellamy trusts her and he feeds her the chip and he's pretty much like, we'll protect you. And that's basically what happens for the rest of the episode. Clark is in the City of Light, and everybody else on the other side is trying to protect her. 
I love the amount of trust that Clark and Bellamy have rebuilt since um, they finally come back together this season, since they spent so much time apart and they had lost quite a lot of trust in each other. They've now built their trust back up and it's beautiful. I also love all the snide marks from Murphy where he's like, yeah, go into the City of Light. That won't end badly. All the stuff we would say if we were in the episode, you know, at least I would say if I was in the episode, I'm very much, he's very much my internal voice sometimes on the show except for when he's being horrible, but like this season he's been pretty good, so it's fine. So Clark enters the City of Light and she's just wandering around and nobody can see her, but she gets distracted because she sees Jasper just like eating some ice cream. And I like, I wonder like, is this the first time Jasper's ever had ice cream? Did they have ice cream in Mount Weather? Cause they definitely didn't have ice cream in space. If you read the books, they didn't have ice cream in space. So they like, I don't know. Ice cream is a new concept to Jasper. Apparently it's something in the City of Light though, so ice cream um but then as she's like just watching jasper eat this ice cream and realizes nobody can see her she hears this whisper of her name and it's like definitely lexa i don't know if you're supposed to know that it's lexa but it was lexa whispering her name um because she has the flame in her neck now so she has all she has access to all of the old commanders and so lexa is trying to guide her in the right direction by putting a little like beacon infinity symbol in the walk sign and it was super cool so then back in the real world, where they're protecting Clark, Miller and Brian leave Octavia and Pike alone because Brian is in rough shape and he needs to go see Abby. And I'm just like, why, why, why would you leave Octavia with Pike? The number one person in the world she wants to murder, why would you leave them together, alone, together? I just, bad decision making, guys. Like, I know you trusted her, but like, why did you trust her? Horrible idea, bad idea. So then, right as the people start to climb in the window, Octavia like slices him in the leg with her sword and makes him basically be the bait for all of the people climbing in the window Which like Octavia, I know you want him to die, but like now is not the goddamn time <laughs> Now is not the time not at all. So Allie's minions are like murdering Pike Bellamy runs in there and he's like what Octavia what and then he shoots all the people that are attacking Pike and they get the heck out of there and like the second they get the heck out of there Kane climbs in the window and this was like the strangest moment of the entire episode because of the look on Kane's face when he climbs in that window. I hated it so much. I hate the look on his face when he climbs in that window. Never do it again, please and thank you. So Bellamy saves the day and um, they pretty much blockade the door outside of where everybody's climbing into. And he has this moment with Octavia where he's like the big brother and he says, and I quote, I let my need for revenge Put me on the wrong side and i don't want that for you so basically he says like don't turn into me earlier this season because my need for revenge made me do things i regret now basically and then octavia like gives him this look like i don't care don't talk to me and it was like a nice brother sister moment <laughs> and by nice i mean i'm conflicted Guys, I'm conflicted. Um, and then Bellamy has this moment with Pike, which I will talk about in my next video where I analyze the episode. But Bellamy has this moment with Pike that was like really important for seeing inside of Bellamy and finally knowing like where he's at in his headspace and what he thinks of all of the actions that he's done this season. And like I really loved that moment. I also didn't like that moment because Pike still doesn't realize that he was in the wrong for killing all of those grounders. Like Pike still doesn't realize that he shouldn't have murdered all those grounders. But like, we'll talk about that in the next video. <laughs> so meanwhile, while all of this fighting is happening and Clark is in the City of Light, Antori starts to go into cardiac arrest, which surprise, surprise, her head is gashed open and you're siphoning blood that isn't her blood type through her system. Murphy and Abby are looking after Antori and Clark. Murphy's basically like, Abby, we have to do something. And Abby starts to manually pump her chest um, to keep the blood flowing through Clark but meanwhile Clark is in the city of light and her body is rejecting the flame because she's not getting enough night blood so now Allie 1.0 the original Allie who made the city of light she knows that Clark is there and she has set everybody after Clark as if Clark is a virus in the system and everybody else in the system is going to wipe out this virus but Clark is weaker and weaker because her body is rejecting the flames, so she's starting to experience the symptoms like the nosebleed. Her brain is on the verge of melting inside of her head, and so she can't really run, she can't really defend herself. And meanwhile, Allie has just sicked all of her little minions on Clark, and Clark can't really defend herself. That Raven knows that Clark is inside the City of Light. They see Clark's code and then they also see that Allie is now targeting Clark like a virus. So Raven, Monty, and Harper make it out that Clark must have put the flame in her 
and then take in the chip to go into the City of Light in order to destroy the City of Light from inside. So Raven now has her mission of getting Clark to the kill switch before Allie can completely download the new version, which was the flame, and delete the kill switch once and for all. So it's pretty much like crunch time, they need to get to the kill switch and they, everybody needs to help Clark get there. So then it kind of looks like all hope is lost because Clark is being like murdered by these minions. And if your mind dies in the City of Light, aka if you die in the City of Light, you can't come back in real life. So Clark is in real danger of dying here and she's pretty much their only hope for the kill switch. And then out of nowhere, when you're least expecting it slash probably expecting it the most, Lexa leaps through the sky and she's like with her swords and I have never been so excited to see Lexa in my life because I am not a Lexa fan. If you watch any of these videos you'll know that I was never super super keen on Lexa but I like her as a character now like in this season she grew on me and she became a likable character. Before the season I didn't like Lexa at all. And I was sure that when she came back this episode, it was gonna be super meaningful. It wasn't just gonna be so that like Clark could say goodbye. It was gonna be because she needed to help Clark with something. And she came right in there, right in the nick of time, murdered everybody and saved Clark. And it was beautiful and I loved it and it was great. I loved it, it was wonderful. I just loved it, okay? I loved it. But, but it's also like really stressful. Just as this entire episode is really stressful, this is like the point in time where this episode gets like really stressful and it doesn't stop being really stressful until the very end. So prepare for all the stress if you're watching the episode. Prepare. So then Clark and Lexa have like a little powwow on the stairs where they're trying to like communicate, but Clark is definitely still dying. Um, whatever they're doing back in Poland is not getting enough night blood to Clark's brain in order to keep the flame alive properly. Um, and then we switch back to Polis and we see what they're doing there to help Clark. So then Abby rips open on Tori's chest, reaches inside and starts manually pumping her heart. Which, you know what? Medieval times call for medieval measures, I guess. Because, oh my god, what? And then Abby's just like, okay Murphy, your turn. And she basically makes Murphy stand there and pump on Tori's heart and Murphy does not look like a happy camper but he does it anyway because Murphy is now a team player and I love it okay Murphy has gone through quite the character development this season and it's great guys I know I've said this many times at this point but it's great so then almost as if nothing happened to Clark she is back to full speed the flame is clearly working again and they get another sign from Becca to follow this little girl on a bike who I wonder if she used to be a past commander I feel like she was probably a past commander. So they follow this little girl on her bike and they get to this fence which is like a literal slash metaphorical firewall um, that they can't pass because it's this giant fence with barbed wire which honestly they could have just laid Lexa's like giant coat over the barbed wire and like climbed the fence and kept running but you know this show is not like the most logical and also like that would have been too easy of a solution so. <laughs> Um, so then we go back to the adventure squad in Polis, who are battling all of Ali's minions and they basically get all of them to come into a hallway inside of the tower and they flood the hallway. Which my question is, where the heck did all of that water come from? Like, this is a post-apocalyptic society. They don't have plumbing, do they? Like, I'm very confused. Where did you get all of that water to flood that floor? But anyway, so they get them all to stand in the water. None of them thought, like, am I going to be electrocuted? Because like, that was the number one thing I thought, but I know they don't think rationally we covered this last episode but anyway um, Octavia lures them all into that puddle and then she electrocutes them all and they're down for the count for a little bit of time and that buys them some time to like blockade another room and hide from them for a little while longer and give Clark some time to pull the switch which literally everyone's just waiting for Clark to pull the switch and she's taking all of her sweet goddamn time um, and so then back in the city of light with Clark Jasper shows up and he's pretty much just like don't make us all go back to the real world. We would love to live here forever. Which honestly, this is not real Jasper. This isn't Jasper's true feelings talking, even though it kind of is. It's like alley Jasper. Um, and so you can't trust it. So then Raven comes to the rescue and she makes this door appear on the side of the building, which leads directly to the kill switch. Then she puts a raven on the door so that Clark will know. And it was very like Hunger Games game maker of her. And I enjoyed it very much so very very much so and Jasper's like uh-uh you're not going in that door I'm pretty positive Lexa like knocks him out and then all of the people that are with Jaha are coming to get Clark 
Lex is basically like, you go through that door and I will stall these people. Like, go save the day. And then Clark tells Lexa that she loves her and Lex is just like, I'll always be with you. And then they part ways. It was kind of weird that Lexa didn't like say she loved her back, but I feel like it was an open-ended ending. I will talk more about that in the next video. And then Lexa goes to kill everybody and Clark goes through the door and it was like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's how I felt about it. Also, it was like, stress, 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 Clark, you're running out of time, stress, stress. That, that was definitely part of it. So when Clark goes through the door, she's actually winds up in Becca's lab up on Polaris, which is obviously just a place inside of the City of Light. But at the same time, she is in space again. She's in the original lab in Polaris. Beck is there and she's like, hello, Commander, because Clark is now the Commander because she has the flame in her neck. Clark realizes that she's Becca Promheda, which is Becca the first Commander. Becca shows her the kill switch, but tells her that she only has a couple moments left to pull it because Allie is almost done downloading the second version from the flame, and once she's done that, the kill switch is gone forever. Clark is about to pull it, and then Allie, regular old Allie 1.0, who has caused all this BS, shows up, and she's basically like, you can't pull that switch because in six months this planet will be inhabitable, and the City of Light is the only place you guys can exist because everybody on Earth will die. And it was like, well, I knew there was gonna be a cliffhanger in this episode, but I did not see that coming. Like, the nuclear power plants already exploded once. Why are they exploding again? Like. I guess they didn't explode the first time, I guess the first time they just launched all of their missiles. So basically now Clark has another moral dilemma where she doesn't know if she should pull this switch or not because she doesn't know if they will be able to survive this nuclear apocalypse that's about to happen to them in six months. So while Clark is battling with this moral dilemma, people have finally broken through the barrier and everyone is fighting for their lives in front of Clark who is unconscious inside the City of Light. And pretty much it's like, do it now, Clark, or everybody's gonna die. And it was like the most stressful moment of my entire life. Pretty much like everybody's trying to kill each other. Kane is on top of Bellamy, choking him to death. And a grounder is trying to kill Octavia. And then Pike saves Octavia, and Octavia just gives him this look. And it was ominous, but it was also like, maybe now she won't murder him. And Abby's about to kill Jackson, and everything is going very, very wrong. And then we go back to Clark, and she's trying to decide whether or not to pull the lever, and Becca tells her that there's still hope. There's six months, there's still hope. It's not necessarily true that Allie is right. It's not necessarily true that the world is gonna be inhabitable in six months. Maybe they can survive this. And then after all of that, back and forth between Allie and Becca, Clark pulls the lever and she's basically just like, we can survive it. And right before Clark pulls the lever, there's like a really good quote that happens, but I'm gonna talk about that in my next video. So if you wanna hear my analysis of that situation and a lot of the other situations, make sure you watch my next video where I actually analyze the episode. Um, and so after Clark pulls the lever, seconds later, everybody wakes up out of their alley trance that they've been in and they can feel their wounds and they realize what they're doing. Kane realizes that he's choking Bellamy and he stops. Clark wakes up and they take the flame out of her neck and everybody's back. And then Clark thanks Murphy and Murphy's like, it's just another day on the ground. And then Murphy sees Amori and they have a hug and it's the cutest thing that I ever did don't see. And I loved it so much. And I will also analyze their relationship in my next video if you wanna talk about them because I love them so very much. My heart melted when they hugged. Like I loved it so very much. And then Bellamy and Octavia had like a little bit of a moment where they made eye contact and it seemed like things were gonna be a little bit better between them. And Kane is in like shambles at what he's been doing and Abby goes to him to comfort him. And it was just like sad and beautiful reunions all around and it was lovely and I loved it. Um, and then we hop back over to Arcadia where Raven, Monty, and Harper are wondering if Clark did it and Jasper's just sitting there crying and they realize that Clark did do it because Jasper's no longer in the City of Light. Jasper's like, I'm sorry, I've stabbed you. And Monty's like, I'm sorry, I shot you. And it was super cute when we finally got our boys back. And they finally had like a genuine hug between Jasper and Monty that we've been waiting for all season. And it was very sad, but it was also very lovely. And I loved it. And then the episode ends with these last two scenes. Um, one where Bellamy is like, Clark, you're not acting like someone who just saved the world. And Clark gives him this knowing look. And she's like, that's because we didn't, not yet. And it's like, dun dun dun, cliffhanger for next season. 
and then you think the episode is over, right? Because it usually ends on Clark and Bellamy. And then the camera pans over to Octavia and Pike, and Octavia looks at Pike, and then she murders him in cold blood, and I am not okay with it. I have a lot of opinions on it, and I am not okay with it. And I will definitely be talking about that in my analysis in my next video, so pay attention to that if you want to talk about how Octavia definitely crossed the line right there. Unless, I guess you don't think she did, but like, I think she definitely did. It wasn't cool of her. It wasn't cool of her at all, and I'm not okay with it. And then the episode ends with her walking out, and they pan back to Clark and Bellamy, who both look super worried, and they end on Bellamy's face and I loved it. Episode over. So that is basically just a run through of what happened in this episode. I have a million and seven side notes that I'm going to talk about in my next video and then I'm also going to make a video I believe on what I think is going to happen with the flame because a lot of people keep saying that like they killed Lexa again, Lexa's dead, um, but the city of light is dead. The city of light is done. But the flame is still alive and I have reason to believe that the grounders will still use the flame and that Lexa and all the other commanders who are still in that are not completely gone forever. So I will see you guys in my next video. I hope you like this. I hope you liked the last episode of the 100. And yeah, thanks for watching. Okay, bye. What? Rude. I'm filming. I'm filming. Um, yeah, I'm filming. No, it's okay. Oh, my phone is covered in bug spray. Ugh, I'm sorry about the traffic. There's a lot of traffic right now. I don't know why. It's like pretty late in the day. I don't know why there's so much traffic on a Friday right now, but okay. There's some weird bug trying to attack me right now.